if you hit that subscribe button, that notification bell, you're going to be missing out on videos and free prizes and raffles we have coming up. Hey friends, have you seen that new feature on uh, YouTube here where it's called time stamping and it allows us creators to go down here and create this timestamp so that you can more quickly access maybe only the information in the video that you want. So like for example here, if I wanted to see close up, go here, boom, moves me right to that part of the video. It's allowing us for uh, the ability to go back to longer content and still kind of serve you uh, for the shorter, quicker stuff. So look for it in all our videos in the future, and let's get started on this one. Hey, it's Shane from HunterInch.com, and in today's video, I have a super high-tech, super cool diagnostic tool for you to add to your toolbox. It's free. Everybody already owns it. And I'm going to show you what I call the wiggle wiggle test in two examples where it is going to save the day in a diagnosis on these two different vehicles. We have an electrical potential issue on this CBR400RR. Then I'm going to do the really, really high tech wiggle wiggle test. And we have a set of carburetors off a of 650 brute force. And this was the main thing that uh, drew the attention of this video. This customer sent these in. They had put carb kits in, still had some issues. Uh, actually a dealer put it in then they put it in and they were just like okay something I'm not seeing something and they've got a problem so I'm going to show you how I got to that point on these carburetors but like I said there's a bonus uh, little tip in here where I'm going to show you how it applies to the electrical system on the CBR 400 so make sure if you haven't done so yet subscribe hit that uh, notification bell button and let's get started on this tip of the day for one of the coolest free diagnostic tools you can have in your toolkit all right, I'm going to kind of blast through this because we have other videos for that on how to leak test on the channel here. But uh, what I'm going to do is just set it up and then kind of start to clean through things. I'm going to purposely make it leak so we get all the air bled out of it and have the system good and full and primed. Uh, first off, I'm just not knowing if there's any leaks, so I'm just basically drying it off, looking at the flashlight. And I did end up finding the leaks, so now I want to clean it off and spray test it. I, if, if there's no leaks, there's no sense in wasting product. So you're going to see now that I'm going to actually just go ahead and really prep it for uh, how we do that leak test. And then we'll get to the cool diagnostic tool. Another point I want to stress is just why this test is so important. The one I'm doing, not the special one, but this one, as you can see where that fuel's leaking, it gives someone a false indication that it's a bowl gasket when it's really not. So stay tuned. I use a blowgun to speed up the drying process of the foot powder just to kind of get to work faster. But check this out, you can see the leak exactly where it's coming from now. Dang, isn't that cool? Such a perfect example of how a bench test can also fail us. If I simply just put the fuel up and don't touch it, it stayed dry for a long time, but I knew I had it leaking earlier before I did the proof test to try and figure out, okay, is it leaking at an inlet? Is it leaking an O-ring? Is it leaking at the bowl gasket? Is it leaking at an overflow? You know, trying to then find it. I was like, dang, this thing sat here for 10 minutes and hasn't leaked a drop. But when I start to handle things and start to move it around, look what happens. Watch here. Look at how if I wiggle that around, you can actually see where the baby powder 
spray or whatnot started to wet. And think about the engine. This is a twin cylinder 650 uh, brute force Kawasaki ATV. And think about how much that vibrates. Bop, 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 bop. Yeah, it's actually starting to grow all the way back there. As that thing sits there and vibrates, it really, really, really is going to stress that and cause that to be a leak. And this is a bad deal because this would be an external fuel leak that would leak down a hot engine or exhaust. And it could be a fire just waiting to happen. Now, Look at that. Look how much that powder has just got wet. And that's just with me barely wiggling this. I'll show you what I'm doing here. Just a little bit. And just pop that drain screw. We're going to force the carb to flow fuel. What that does is burp and air shut out that. Of there. That might just be holding things. I know it doesn't make a lot of sense, but we want to have um, all the air burped out of there and just solid fuel flow sitting on the float needle all the way from the tank like it is in the real world. Now we're going to take a look here and you can see that I'll speed it up in that the leak will really become pronounced. You can see where the fuel is leaking out of there and leaking all along the back. If I let this sit long enough, it's going to run all the way to here and then it's going to end up dripping off that screw and this would give somebody a possible indication that the bowl gas gets bad if they see it dripping back here but it's because it wasn't pinpointed on the source of the leak up here and gravity is just running it back let's just leave the camera sit here and watch that powder soak up have you figured out this amazing diagnostic tool yet this free tool that you already have in your toolbox that is it it's the wiggle wiggle test i told you i warned you it was gonna be really super high tech but you could see how the only thing that caught and diagnosed this properly was giving it a real world vibration simulation or what I call the wiggle wiggle test. And that is such an amazing tool. Let's jump on into case study number two and show you another great example of where this will save the day. Look at this routing of this ignition. Uh, let's see. Yeah, this is the wires going to the ignition coils and then going on to this throttle position sensor. It's actually pinched. So the last person that worked on this, when they put this bracket on, they weren't being, you know, uh, really aware of their surroundings. They just bolted the bracket down and instead of being up in here in this nice guide where it's supposed to be guided, it fell down here and it's pinched. Now, you might think, well, big deal, just pull it off. You gotta think, how many miles has this bike been rode and that's pinched in there? That ain't going nowhere. So that means that all the vibrations that have been happening here have been pinching against that wire harness. I'm gonna tell you this, it's for surely gonna fail at some point, but what I need to be concerned about, is it gonna fail uh, a week after I work on the bike, a month after I work on the bike? Like this needs to be documented on the work order and then I'm going to pull apart this sheathing and actually inspect the wires. Like, I'm just going to go to the extent to know that the wiring is good and that there's no pinched wires that are going to create high resistance. You know, on the, on the least end of the problems, it could reduce performance. And on the worst end of the problems, you know, this customer could be riding down the road and lose, you know, electrical, and then they'd have a real problem. Or if it's a throttle position sensor like this, maybe it'd go into a limp mode. I, I don't know. I don't know how this is set up on this bike. All I know is that in right. And you could see real clearly how it goes. I went ahead and loosened this up and to show you that when it's right, it's like that. But look at the uh, damage there where it's been pinched. It almost looks like it pierced it, but yeah, it's just really close. But in both spots there, you can see where it was smashed, you know, on those two... Uh, brackets but this my friends would be correct all right friends there you have it this just really cracked me up it reminded me of a of a student in a video we made uh back at western Iowa tech back in the day with a, a kid named brock man he was awesome just super fun student and 
I was trying to teach, you know, how to do this test and talking about, yeah, I've had bikes where they only leak on the side stand and when you have them straight up and down, they don't leak. And so we were joking around. He said, okay, let's just do a kickstand test. So we took the carburetor and set it on its side and tested, made sure it wouldn't leak. And Brock comes over and he goes, well, what about, what about a wheelie test? Or what about a, you know, a ripping down the road test? And he comes, he grabs the carburetor and he's like crazy aggressively shaking it, trying to make it leak. And it just, uh, it made me laugh, but it also kind of reinforced that things can happen in operation that just plain aren't going to happen on the bench. So when you have an opportunity, oh, I'm seeing a drip now. When you have an opportunity to literally kind of give it what I call the wiggle test, you're going to find that beneficial. Now, you don't want to wiggle so hard you're going to break something, especially a lot of this stuff that's plastic. But I'm telling you, if you could take, you know, fuel lines and kind of give them a little wiggle wiggle test, uh, you're going to find that super beneficial. I want to say something in summary to really kind of inspire you and get you to think about this. Because this this type of content, this type of uh, stuff, it's not found in a book. I mean, it comes from years of experience and, you know, the people that have done it passing it on, right? So I, I can't say this enough that you can fill your toolbox with a million tools. You can put every diagnostic tool you can imagine on your shelves. You could do all of that stuff, but your number one tool you need to invest in is your brain. You need to take all these tools, take all these processes, take all these procedures and, and really dig into them. And I, I, I just, I can't get enough of it myself all the time. I'm always learning. I'm coming across something. I mean, even thinking about the wiggle wiggle test and it being kind of a, a funny name and, you know, a little, um, uh, catfishing on a title if you will but it's a deal of like i remember when i learned that lesson i guarantee this i learned it the hard way like it was something that i just was not diagnosing correctly it was a comeback it was something i mean it's just it's just the reality of it so you know uh just like i said and i've said this in a million other videos invest in yourself invest in your head uh take all these skill sets and put them to use with a lot of uh, efficiency and it just makes it more fun you know, I don't want to have to take carbs on off 10 times. I don't want a bike to break down to where I lose electrical uh, because I didn't think, uh, hey, what could happen like under actual running conditions versus, you know, being in the shop. You, you may have heard this before uh, where somebody talks a lot about like, oh yeah, it never happens when it goes to the shop. It only happens to me when I, when I go back home. Well, that's because a lot of times the mechanics aren't doing a wiggle wiggle test or aren't trying to force something into you know a situation to make it happen it was one of the big debates at the college when we got a, a dyno where i was requesting a dyno as they said you know all the dealers were like they only a dyno i will never have an entry-level tech ever touching jobs like that and and i remember arguing with the you know the the people and saying what about all the other things what about all the teaching lessons like one of the biggest teaching tools in my career by far was a dyno because i could go in there and and simulate like real real world things right like i could go in there and wiggle wires i could go in there and like live test fuel pressures or electrical outputs i could do all these things that you couldn't do sitting on a bench so um, I think I'm definitely an outside the box uh, mechanic and I'm outside the box instructor. And I will tell you this, it's because of great people that also taught me. So I'm going to get back at it. As always, if you haven't done so yet, please like, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. Make it a great day and keep wrenching my friends.